and voiceover work, you can, you know, be free and, and try things that you would never try on camera. And I'm curious if you can keep acting like a douchebag when I shove that gavel up your ass. It's fun, it's a little more precise acting because you have people telling you, okay, stop, do it again this way, do it again this way, do it again this way. You're gonna get my boys out of jail and help me destroy the saints. You can come up with a million different voices and um, really let go. Sweetie, it's not a big deal, just kill him. My character in the game is pretty crazy. He sort of like thinks he's the man. Oh, I'm not a student here. I just come here for put. And he's sort of dealing drugs, but not so good at it. Here's today's take. There are many singles where 50 should be. Yeah, about that. I couldn't get a hold of some of my guys. I played the same character in part one, and I'm excited and uh, happy to be back. Chief, how's the investigation going? This is an investigation, Miss Valderrama. I can't get into details. I thought about just kind of people I know, and I had a few, like, teenage friends in mind. They were doing these things, and I, like, embodied them for for Shandi. This gang shit's got you a little stressed out. You need to relax. By playing skee-ball. Oh, yeah. You know, most people just smoke pot. Right. And then they go play skee-ball. The comedy will, will, will play through a lot of different demographics because, you know, people like to laugh when they, when they play games. Doc said I should be up and murdering in a couple of days. Well, you know, he didn't say murdering, but you get the idea. Gat, you and I are gonna hit the pyramid. Well, we don't get to blow shit up in public? The tough part is the screaming and the yelling. That's really hard. It's really, really fun. I thoroughly enjoy it because you can be anybody, so I can be as sexy as I wanted to be. I'm glad you two are having fun because God forbid we do something about the Saints. So I had to do a lot of, like, a lot of lines where I'm screaming. You like this? This is what you want! Back off! Back the fuck off! I'll kill you and then her next! You know who the fuck I am! In part two, the character is now a reformed policeman. This time he's more low-key, so it's a little bit easier to do. Your uh, clients are a bunch of criminals. So is that the kind of mentality you like to instill in your subordinates? Huh. Spare me. All right, they're not getting released, and that's that. I did say some naughty words in this game. And I do some naughty things. <laughs> I think that Saints Row 2 coming out in August is a good position for us. I think um, you know having some separation between us and competitive product is good. Um, we got to remember that um, you know open world is a genre. It's, uh, there's room for more than just one game in that genre. Um, and importantly, Saints Row 2 is offering, we think, a much different experience in the competition. Um, it's uh, all about uh, over-the-top, memorable moments, hyper-realism things that are going to make players go, holy crap, did you see what happened when he tried this, and wow, did you see what happened when he did that? It's a very different um, experience than what some other games are uh, looking to do. Um, I think you combine that overall direction with the fact that we have you know, co-op, we can play through the entire single player mission, single player campaign and co-op, that gamers are going to want to get more than one open world title this, this year, absolutely. The aiming mechanic in uh, open world games is a challenge to implement correctly. Uh, thankfully, in Saints Row 1, our free range mechanic for the combat system was nearly universally appraised. So we didn't change it all that much. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. What we did was uh, we added some features to it. Number one, the over the over the shoulder zoom camera. So you can pick up enemies from a longer distance a lot easier. It's a lot more satisfying. But the core mechanic of the free look for uh, ranged combat, we didn't touch that too much because, I mean, we, I think we nailed it in Saints Row 1. We wouldn't want to change at all, at all in Saints Row 2. Uh, the central conflict in Saints Row 2 revolves around the player needing to reclaim Stillwater for his own. Um, while he was in a coma, the vacuum left there was filled by three new gangs. They're very stylized gangs, very different than the, the urban gangs that you found in Saints Row 1. Um, they're a little bit more um, over the top. It's, it's, it goes right with our, uh, our direction of hyper-realism and over-the-top moments. Um, so you have three distinct storylines story or story arcs as we call them and you can play them in any order that you want. So that story structure is the same as Saints Row 1. However, all the gangs are very, very different and very uh, well, differently stylized than what happened what you saw in Saints Row 1 as well. Stillwater uh, in Saints Row 2 is very, very different from Saints Row 1. In fact, every district has been touched to some degree or another. Um, it takes, it, it, we're, we're using the term comic book years, comic book time. 
Uh, the amount of change that you witnessed between the two games couldn't have happened in the 10 to 15 years it happened, but it doesn't matter. We're excited about it. Um, we're talking about a 45 to 50% uh, increase in size, four completely new underground districts that are a lot more organic, different feeling um, as far as our direction goes and what you expect from an urban environment. Um, there's a lot of change, so I think what we're going to end up having is people who played Saints for One and are fans of the franchise are going to have a great time exploring the city and looking for new things. And people that uh, are new to Saints Row 2 are just going to be presented with a, a, a huge, very discursive and different looking environment that's very well polished and detailed. Saints Row 2 is shipping this year, concurrently on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 on August 26, 2008. Our ultimate goal in Saints Row 2 was to give players an over-the-top, open-world, crazy co-op experience. So you've got so much stuff to do in the city of Stillwater this time around. You can play activities together, play the story missions together, go off and boost cars together, find hit lists and assassinate people together, try out all the new vehicles like helicopters, airplanes, jet skis, motorcycles. You know, you can take these planes up and then just jump out and skydive and get respect points for it and, you know, earn money. You can, you know, like join this underground fighting circuit. And, and, and get in a fight club and you know and, and, and beat people up for cash and respect. The city in Saints Row 2 is one and a half times as large as it was in the original Saints Row so you've got several new districts to explore you know there's a university, uh, there is a nuclear power plant and you know on top of that all the old districts that you knew have all been completely you know redone as well. The, the, the neighborhood of Saints Row it's not this dilapidated, gang-infested neighborhood anymore. It's this, you know, this huge glass and steel business district with green space and you know coffee shops on every corner. Saints Row 2 is going to differentiate itself from GTA 4. We think that they left a lot on the table in terms of, you know, what the variety of gameplay that 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 the player can do. So we really want to offer offer gamers, you know all these options. They can, you know, throw people around in the world. They have tons of activities. You know, you can grab a, a septic truck and spray raw sewage in the city and devalue property when you get involved in this real estate war. We actually offer three new gangs for the player to fight. Plus, you've got this really shady corporation that you're going to be taking on throughout the course of the whole game. So, there's uh, no shortage of new enemies to be taken on in the game. We began designing Saints Row 2 actually uh, even before Saints Row 1 was done, so we've been working on the game for three years now. We knew uh, that gamers were, you know, like in love with the idea of open world urban chaos, so we knew the franchise was going to be successful, and we had a plan to, you know, continue to advance the story of Saints Row 1, bring to the table all these new features like cooperative play, uh, increased customization, gang customization, you know, improved combat features, new vehicles, and just really lay that all out for the players so that they have the ultimate choice in an open world game. The city in, in Saints Row 2 is, uh, it's the city from Saints Row 1 evolved several years in the future so the, the city itself has grown, um, you know, it's like one and a half times as large as it was in Saints Row 1 and we've created several new areas for the player to explore. We've got a university, several underground areas like an underground cavern, a huge underground mall, um, there's a uh, a uh, hotel board and, and beach boardwalk area. We've got some islands like a nuclear power plant and a prison. Um, so just that alone gives the player all these new areas to explore. On top of that, all the old areas that they that they used to know have completely changed as well. The uh, the Saints Row neighborhood, for instance, is no longer this uh, gang infested district. It's a glass and steel utopia where uh, corporations, you know, have. have have taken up uh, taken up residence, and you've got you know people walking around to the coffee shop in, suit, in suits and ties all day long. Um, the industrial area of the city, you know, in the southeast side, that's fallen to greater disrepair. You know, the docks have completely crumbled into the ocean. We've got um, you know over 130 interiors to, for the player to explore. Tons of stores, lots of strongholds. So uh, the city has really grown up, out, around, in the taunt system in Saints Row 2. Uh, gives the player the ability to interact with pedestrians and other gang members, either on their side or en enemy gangs. You are allowed to pick from any number of uh, taunts that we've got, and by doing this, um, you can use these taunts when you've killed an enemy, and you'll get, uh, you know, respect rewards. It's sort of our little way of giving the player thanks for interacting with the world and discovering these little things that, as they play. The biggest challenges in developing Saints Row 2 uh, have involved, you know, revamping the streaming system so we can get new vehicle systems in, 
Uh, you know, certainly designing co-op in an open world game for the first time was uh, something that brought a whole lot of challenges to us. And then also writing a compelling story so that we could continue off from the cliffhanger that was Saints Row 1, you know, and making sure that that made sense and we had something that would draw the player back into our world. Personally, my favorite feature in Saints Row 2 is the cooperative play, but there's a whole lot of things for other, uh, other players to, to enjoy as well. People who really enjoy personalizing their game will get a real kick out of the improved customization that we've got of the characters. You can play now as a female character, you can set personality elements, so you can pick taunts and compliments and even walk styles and all those fine-tuning like little things that allow you to really make the character your own in the game. Uh, with enough time and patience you can create really anybody with our character creation system. Saints Row 2 will definitely definitely trend towards that kind of risque humor, there will be a lot of off-color jokes, a lot of crude jokes, uh, sexual humor, and, and, that, and that kind of sort. Saints Row 2 and you know, Red Faction are both open world games, but our combat systems are very different. And you know, our, our game in Saints Row 2 really emphasizes open world chaos. So we don't have arbitrary destruction where you can you know, deform geometry the way, the way you can in Red Faction, but we give you a whole, whole arsenal of weapons such as laser-guided rocket launchers, remote charges. These are things that you can really use to just blow up anything you see in terms of like vehicles or you can stick them to people, you know, stick charges to people and blow them up and juggle them into the air. Uh, we give you automatic shotguns, all kinds of um, implements of just sheer urban chaos that you can use to blow people away. For what platforms is it coming out and when is it coming out? Saints Row 2 is coming out for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 on August 26, 2008. Saints Row 1 was a very popular open world game that came out on, uh, on the 360 in 2006. Um, we knew from the beginning of Saints Row 2 we wanted to retain certain features. Number one, we wanted to retain uh, customization, we wanted to retain uh, the universally praised combat that we had in Saints Row 1. And basically the overall way that the, the game flow was structured. By that I mean you have three main story arcs, you can play through them in any way that you want. You're able to open those missions by participating in executing activities and building up respect. Respect is the currency in Saints Row 2. So those are the three major areas where we are um, actually um, retaining what we learned in Saints Row 1. With GTA 4 coming out, uh, why should we be interested in Saints Row 2? Uh, Saints Row 2 offers what we believe is going to be a very unique experience compared to the other open world games coming out this year. Saints Row 2 is all about hyper-realism, over-the-top moments, we want players to leave and say, holy crap, did you see what happened when he tried this? And this is all about grabbing you right from the start and never letting go. Uh, we think that, combined with the fact that we uh, are able to allow you to play through the entire story mission via co-op, is a very unique feature for us where players are going to want to buy more than one open world game this year. Saints Row 2 will include a competitive multiplayer mode, but unfortunately we're not talking about specific details at this time. Co-op in Saints Row 2 is um, a seamless integration. What that means is if you and I were on a friends list, you saw me playing, you could request to uh, join my single player game. I would accept your invite. We'd be playing together for however long we wanted. You could drop out and go do whatever you wanted, come back again, or vice versa. Seamless integration, come in and leave whenever you want, and it won't affect the single player progression. Saints Row 2 takes place in Stillwater, but it is a completely revamped Stillwater. People who played Saints Row 1 fanatically are going to see um, very subtle changes in some districts. And in other areas of the city, they're going to say this is completely unrecognizable. Every district has been touched to some degree or another. Touch, I mean, it's been revamped by the level artists. Um, overall, it's about 45% larger than Saints Row 1. We've included four underground areas that weren't even present in Saints Row 1. Um, I think people who played Saints Row 1 are going to have a great time seeing the differences in Saints Row 2. And people who are new to Saints Row 2 are just going to have a hell of a good time seeing a city that they haven't seen before. My two favorite features in Saints Row 2 is obviously uh, co-op, being able to play through the entire story mission in co-op. I think that's phenomenal, and that just by playing it's, a, it's unbelievably, an unbelievable good time. Above I mean that, in the more micro level, it's these gameplay elements called diversions. Diversions are, um, it's gameplay that isn't called out in a HUD or map or anywhere in the game. Um, they're hidden. They're designed to incentivize the player to try out things, and when they find a diversion, they are appropriately rewarded. 
And diversions for me at least make it feel like you're always involved in the game. You're always trying out new stuff. You're always exploring, and that just kind of brings the whole open world experience to a close. It's really uh, so. I would say definitely co-op and diversions are my right now my two favorite features. Saints Row 2 is coming out on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. August 26, 2008. How much tits and ass is going to be in the game? How much tits and ass? Uh, there's, <laughs> there's no nudity in Saints Row 2. We can't do that, unfortunately. Censor and age rating boards across, across the globe. Um, well, number one, they frown against that when you combine it with, um, with the, the amount of violence and other off-color humor that we have. That really pushes it into dangerous censorship territory. So um, we certainly are not shying away from the um, unique brand of humor that Saints Row 1 had, but as far as specific nudity, you won't find that in Saints Row 2.